flag up this study that just came out a few months ago, looking at rowers. If you've watched rowing on the Olympics, it is so acidotic. Even the Olympic gold medalists, when they win, they're almost hanging out of the boat. Some of them are puking because there's so much acid buildup. So, yeah, even before this study came out, I was thinking rowers would be perfect for beta alanine supplementation. What they did here is prior to supplementation, they measured the amount of carnosine in each athlete's muscle and, and then put them through a series of a 16 second test, a one and a half minute test, and a six and a half minute test. And what they found was that the higher the muscle carnosine, the better they performed the test. So this is even pre-supplementation in, in that rowers who naturally have higher muscle carnosine are going to perform, perform better than, their, than their, the guy next to them who happens to have less muscle carnosine. This is a pretty powerful message to give uh, rowing, Olympic level rowing coaches. They then took this group and, supplement, and split them in two, supplemented uh, beta alanine in one group and placebo in the other. And then afterwards they did a 2,000 meter rowing test again. And again, this is the increase in muscle carnosine from the beta alanine supplementation and the increase in performance. And so what they found here was following supplementation, the beta alanine group was 4.3 seconds faster over about a six minute test than the placebo group. And you might ask yourself, ah, six minute test, four seconds, uh, yeah, it's significant, but is that really relevant? Is that is that, that big of a deal? Here's the uh, 2008 Olympic uh, final, and you tell me if four seconds makes a big, big deal to these guys. That's the difference from not even making the final to getting a gold medal. So at the elite level, uh, a one percent in performance benefit is already are already massive. So they concluded here um, positive correlation between muscle carnosine and rowing performance, and the increase in muscle carnosine from beta alanine supplementation suggests that muscle carnosine is a new determinant of rowing performance. And this is in a very, very good journal that just came out. This is the strongest performance data that I've, I've seen so far. Talking about performance, measuring elite performance, um, my wife's an athlete. This was the 2007 World Championship semifinal. Um, these are the five girls that made the final. Unfortunately, my wife was sixth. She was, uh, what is that, half a second? Uh, back, this is again 2007, she wasn't using beta alanine and carnosine at that point. Perhaps that 0.21% that she needed to get in the final could have come from that situation. That's what it looks like when you finish it. It's 4 minutes 16 seconds. This is 1 second here. It's, it's every, everyone finished within 1 second. So that's, at the elite level, this is the type of stuff that, um, that we're dealing with. Some other indirect evidence that I find really interesting is Roger Harris, when he started doing some of these studies, went to South Korea. And look at all the, I highlighted a lot of the author's names here on a couple of the papers that he's put out, and he worked with the Korean National Sport University. And I realize I'm in Australia and you don't give two tosses about the Winter Games, but I'm Canadian and so it's, the Winter Games kind of matter. I do find it incredibly interesting that at the 2010 uh, Olympics in Canada, South Korea won 14 medals, ended up 7th overall on the medal list, and 13 out of 14 of their medals came from high intensity sport performance. Now, I, I can't definitively say that all these guys were on beta alanine, but considering all these authors in the Korean National Sport University was involved, I'll let you decide whether or not you think that they were using beta alanine or not. 